Hello everybody, my name is Miss Chelsea Bandojo and I am an ICU nurse here at Saudi Arabia. I also am a graduate school student in the Philippine Women's University in Manila, Philippines. Today, I'm going to discuss to you or teach you on how to use the CLMA device or the closed loop medication administration device. Sounds new, right? Well, unfortunately, in the Philippines, we don't have it yet. And maybe in the future, if you'll encounter this, at least you have an idea of what it is. So, what is a CLMA? The CLMA, or the Closed Loop Medication Administration Device, is a device used to process the whole medication administration system electronically, utilizing the hospital information system, thus maximizes patient safety during medication administration. With the use of this advancing technology in our healthcare system, medications were able to lessen, especially on pediatrics. So how is it possible? Hmm. Well, first, the doctor will order the medication through the Hospital Information System computer program named Best Care System, or simply, it is the electronic medical reporting system our hospital is using. This means that we are on a paperless system and everything is documented electronically. Interesting, right? So after the prescribing doctor signs his or her medication order on the correct patient, the clinical pharmacist reviews to check the order and verifies it's safe to administer before dispensing the medication. They also apprehend if the dosage of the medication is correct is there any contraindication with the other medication if it is available in s and so many more to practice patient safety? So most likely, if they find something wrong with the order, they call the doctor to correct his or her order. After the pharmacist confirms the order, he or she will, will send the barcoded medication in the medication room where the patient is admitted. So why should we use it? Patient safety is at the core of modern healthcare. As per Fitzsimmons and Vaughn 2015, the notion of harm caused by the processes of healthcare is evolving and injuries once seen as unavoidable are now preventable and open to mitigation. So it has been said that the extent harm caused to patients in the practice of medicine has been showed as per evidences from reports that uncover avoidable errors alike that involve high-risk medications such as patient misidentification and many more. For these avoidable errors to be avoided, it is termed that patient safety as a freedom from accidental injury caused by medical care such as harm or death attributable to adverse drug events, patient misidentifications. To whom should we use it? Well, it is applicable to all patients of all ages, but this is more crucial especially for children due to its vulnerability to harm. Most likely, there are four related issues in caring for a child. First, is their developmental age, where they mature both cognitively and physically. They are also dependent on caregivers and parents. They have different epidemiology, meaning most pediatrics requires acute episodic care, not care for chronic conditions as with adult patients. And children are more likely than other groups to live in poverty and experience racial and ethnic disparities in healthcare due to, due to their demographics. What are the five R's of medication administration? Okay, so even though there is the device that supports us to administrate a medication safely, still as a professional, we still have to independently double check 
everything before anything goes into our patients. So, what are the five R's? First, is the right patient. How you identify it? Here, we are using the medical record number and the patient name. We always ask the patient, what is their name? If the patient cannot talk, let the sitter can to identify the patient. And then, you can double check it with your laptop as well as there is this ID band. So, that is how you identify them. The right medication. You have to check if the patient is to be given with this medication. Like for example, any kind of antibiotic, especially pain medication. Everything must be double checked, especially if for example, the allergies of this patient. If for example, the doctor miss the allergy status of the patient, yet the patient is having an allergy about it, you should always confirm for the right medication before it is given to our patient. So the right dose, if we're, especially for children, they are calculated as per their weight. So if for example, you think that the doctor ordered more or less than the required the requirement of the patient, you should always confirm it with the doctor before you administrate it to your patient. So the right route, you're getting me, right? So the right route is, for example, the patient is like, cannot have orally. Like for example, there is the patient cannot swallow and there's no NGT, yet the patient needs to receive the medication. You cannot give a tablet in, for the patient. So you have to double check it with the doctor. So right route, for example, the medication also is for IV, not IM. Yet you gave it IM. So there will be always a medication error and your patient will suffer for it because of your negligence to double check it. The right time, this is very usual for medication error. Why? Because some of the medications are like, for example, every two hours or every hour, or sometimes it's only daily, but sometimes some nurses also miss this right timing, meaning that the nurse is giving the medication, not like, for example, if uh, it's daily, it should be at nine o'clock or at night time. You should always check it before you give it because we don't want to overdose the patient, especially if it is a child. This is the good thing with the CLMA. It always, it is linked with the hospital information system. That's why if ever before you give it, it stops you and warns you that you are having or you are doing something wrong. So that is the five R's. Where should we use it? When you say it is closed loop, it means that it should be in the patient's bedside. That's why it is closed. It's not closed like closed, closed, but close, near you. Not outside the patient room where you can just take the ID band and scan it, but it should be together with your patient. And then that's the time you can give the medication. What are the things you need? First, you need a laptop with the hospital information system program or best care program to identify your patient correctly. Second, you must secure your patient's ID band that it is correct and with his barcode. Third, you need the nurse's badge with barcode. So this means that our ID has its barcode and this identifies who the user is. So fourth, you need also, of course, the CLMA device. Fifth, the medication you are going to give with its barcode. How do we use it? Well, I will show you a video on how it actually works. 
So this is the best care system program. On the right side, the blue check there is the clinical pharmacist review. So you can see on the upper left side, there is the patient name, patient medical record number, patient medication, dose, and the site where it should be administered. These are the things you need. You need the nurse's badge, the CLMA, and the medication with the barcode on it. So this is the process. First, you have to assign the device in your name. By doing this, you have to scan the barcode of your badge. It will give you a click sound. Then you have to press done. And now you have to log in your identification or your badge by scanning also the barcode. So the CLMA can do three functions, but we just need the medication administration. There on the next page, you will see your badge number. And then now you will have to scan the patient identification or the ID band. It will give you a click sound. And then you have to press next. So, now you have to scan also the patient medication that you want to give by its barcode. And then check it properly. Then press next. You have to verify it that everything is correct. If you don't have any medication, just press no. But otherwise, you can administer multiple medications in this device then just you just have to sign double check everything before you sign it so press sign it will load for some time of course before you give the medication you just have to do the proper hand hygiene and then apply your ppes then explain to your patient what you're going to do so that they will not feel anxious and then you can do the whole process and so you can give the medication so that is it for this video i hope you learned something at least something from this video so i hope you all well god bless and keep safe bye